It's like stuck on there. Like it's not coming off. I, I need a, what do I do? Like I need a, I need a crafty expert to help me with this. What do I do? Jennifer, Jennifer McGuire? Girl, where you at? What do I do? <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be doing a technique that I came upon by accident. So I really love nail polish and I thought, you know, this could work on paper. So I did a test of it and it didn't rub off or have a stench or anything. So I thought to myself, let's run a couple tests with different kinds of nail polish to see if we could use them in paper crafts and card making. And so my first thought was, you know, for in order for the nail polish to really adhere to paper, it might need a smoother surface uh, similar to your nails. So I decided I was going to do a couple layers of clear heat embossing in order to achieve that effect. And so for clear heat, emboss clear heat embossing, all you really need is Versamark ink, some uh, embossing powder, and your heat gun. And you know you repeat the steps um, two or three times to really get a smooth finish to your die cut. And I thought for this uh, first test, I would use a balloon die cut because you'll be able to see the effect easier than you would a word die. And so as you can see here, I'm inking it first um, using my makeshift handle. Then I'm dunking it in clear heat embossing powder. And then I got I have my heat gun in, in the background all nice and hot and ready to go. So I'm just checking on it to see if it's still sticky. And then I'm um, heating the powder down to make sure I get a really nice smooth finish. And I want to make sure it's completely dry before I adhere some more... Um, uh, more layers of he clear heat embossing powder. Once I was done with all of my heat embossing, I decided to use my confetti nail polish first because it looks so fun to use. <laughs> it has these metal little sparkles on them and little bits of confetti. And I thought, you know, let's go big or go home on the first try, right? And so I got out some scrap paper and I tested it first. And um, as you can see, as I kind of paint my die cut here, it's it's working. Um, it doesn't, uh, I can't exactly control, shh, my phone, that was my phone. <laughs> uh, I can't exactly control like the coverage of all the confetti bits. I mean, it's not that big of a problem, but you will have to use multiple layers if you decide to use this type of nail polish. As you can see here, it's pretty, I mean, it looks pretty. Um, but again, if you're a control freak or perfectionist, I don't know if this would be the right medium to use to decorate your die cut here. Moving on to our next test, I'm going to be using clear nail polish and loose glitter. And these are two items that probably most everyone should have, you know, in their beauty and craft stash. And I thought this method would give you the most control over applying glitter. And so I will first start by uh, doing my layers of clear heat embossing and this time I wanted to use a word die cut because I thought you know I really had in my mind that this was going to be the best technique to use because you know everyone most everyone has the supplies already and it'd be great to use this technique to adding um, any color glitter or sparkles to your die cuts without having to you know use glitter paper or anything like that and so I got out my jar of glitter here and I'm adding it on top while uh, the layers of heat embossing was still kind of sticky. Just try to see if the loose glitter will stick to my die cut at first. And it kind of, well, it, it doesn't. <laughs> and so I'm trying to work with it, trying to add more in some places and it's just not working. So I thought maybe some clear nail polish will solve this. And so I decided to paint over top, which was a stupid idea because as you can see here, I'm just moving the confetti bits around and moving the glitter around and what's worse of all is that um, after a couple of times of doing this I'm actually getting glitter on my nail polish brush and I'm like well crap <laughs> okay um, I didn't want to do that and so I cleaned it off and you know I, I gave it a couple more tries because it was really uh, I really had high hopes for this technique and it just wasn't working out. And so I gave up and I'm cleaning off my brush now and that was a huge fail. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Unless you want bits of confetti on your clear nail polish and you don't care. But other than, than that, um, I don't recommend this technique. Although the leftover glitter makes a really cool effect on my scrap paper over there. 
Yeah, this one, yeah, it was a bust. Next, the next test will be using iridescent flake nail polish. And um, so this nail polish shifts colors, has flakes that shift colors between orange and green, and it looks phenomenal over black nail polish. So I thought it would look phenomenal over black heat embossing powder. Well, until I put my heat gun on it and it went everywhere. <laughs> And I thought, eh, you know, it's a mess, but I can clean it up with a swiffer cloth, no big deal. I'll just continue to make my layers. Um, and then I realized that, oh crap, I got it on my Versamark ink pad. I see it out of the corner of my eye, and at this point, I'm still thinking, it's not that big a deal. I mean, it should wipe off, right? Yeah, it's nothing that, you know, a swiffer cloth or a paper towel couldn't solve, right? It's just loose embossing powder should come right off. It, and so I'll go back to heating up my die cut here and then I'm re realizing, oh man, what if this doesn't come off? It's like stuck on there. Like, it's not coming off. I, I need a, what do I do? Like, I need a, I need a crafty expert to help me with this. What do I do? Jennifer? Jennifer McGuire? Girl, where you at? What do I do? <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. So I'm just going to go back to cleaning up my mess here and silently sulking over my second lost Versamark ink pad of the week. And I'm just trying to ignore the fact that I, yeah, demolished that ink pad and going and moving forward with this test. I'm just going to keep trotting on and hopefully be distracted by the sparkles. I love sparkles. They make me happy and forget about my problems. Sparkles. See? <laughs> this test is actually coming out better than expected like i don't know if you can see it in the camera there but um the iridescent flakies do shift from color to color it's kind of hard to see on this die cut but i saw it in real life and i thought wow that does look kind of kind of cool and it looked really cool up close so you can kind of see it right there as i move it closer to the camera there and i thought you know let's try this on a uh, balloon die cut to hopefully that uh, you guys could see it better and I just did the same process. I did a couple layers of black heat embossing powder, which now I hate black heat embossing powder now. You are going to my donate pile because I will never use you again. A couple of days have passed since this test and I'm still finding black heat, and heat embossing powder all over my workspace. If it was sparkle heat embossing powder now, I wouldn't mind that so much. But since it's black, well, it's just annoying. All right, so I'm going to show you this die cut here. And this, um, on the balloon die cut, you can definitely see it better. The color shifts from orange to green. And this, I mean, it looks super cool in the camera. And it looks even better in real life. It's just beautiful. Uh, so that turned out way better than expected. So I thought, you know, why didn't I try regular color nail polish in the first place as my first test? I don't know. Probably because I wanted to use a sparkle nail polish first. But, um... As a final send off to this dreaded black heat embossing powder, I used it one last time on this die cut here because I figured, well, my ink pad has black heat embossing powder all over it. So I might as well just use it up, right? And so I'm going over this die cut with um, some nail polish here. I'm supposed to be have a chrome effect to it, but um, it works pretty much like regular nail polish. And the first layer is kind of streaky. I noticed like it wasn't um, as uh, self-leveling as regular nail polishes on nails. Um, but the other like confetti nail polish and the iridescent flaky nail polish, like I guess those are probably streaky, but you could you couldn't tell because of all the shininess to it. And for this one, it's supposed to have a smooth finish, and it's pretty obvious that. The way I'm painting this die cut, it does not have a smooth finish. And so I thought some clear top coat would fix that and help it self um, self level, but it just, yeah, it's not, oh no, it's not, it's not as pretty as the other ones, or, you know, you could easily tell the mistakes. Um, so this one, yeah, you know what, not my favorite. I don't think I'm going to use a smooth, solid color nail polish on die cuts. So the la um, second to last test is holographic glitter nail polish, and I have this in my stash. And I was praying to the crafty gods that this would look good on paper because it looks stunning on nails. I mean, if you have it on your nails and you're in 
direct day, direct light. I mean, this is so sparkly and so rainbowy, whatever. That uh, it's it's kind of distracting actually. And so, uh, you know, I really wanted this to work. And so I'm applying the first layer, and I see that it's streaky. And I'm like, oh, no, please, please, please work. And so uh, it wasn't until later, and I decided that, you know, I'm going to make this work. <laughs> and so um, I actually applied four layers of this nail polish, you know, letting it dry in between each time before I finally got the sparkles to appear in the linear fashion that it does um, on your nails. And the end result is just absolutely Stunning. I mean, you could see it on camera there, but it looks even more gorgeous in real life. And so, oh my god, it's so distracting. Okay, let's go over um, all of our tests so far. So the first test was the confetti nail polish. Yeah, you know, it wasn't too bad. Um, you just uh, you can't be too picky about where the confetti bits go, but it does it does cover pretty well. The second test was that loose glitter, which was eh, fail, whatever. Uh, the third test was that iridescent flaky nail polish, which worked. It, uh, it I think it works best over black uh, heat embossing powder. Although try that at your own risk. <laughs> just a warning. <laughs> And then um, the fourth test was the solid color nail polish, which, I mean, if you're not an expert nail polish painter, I don't know, I wouldn't recommend it. And the fifth test was this holographic nail polish, which is like, oh my god, it's so sparkly. Um, that was my favorite, for sure. All right, so let's move on to put these into cards. First, I wanted to show you a technique where I thought, you know, I have a really pretty nail color on my hands, why not just use that on a card? And so that's what I did with that shiny love dye in the middle there. Um, I used the same nail polish that was on my hands and I just went direct to paper. I did not use any heat embossing powder and it was like, glittery enough and opaque enough that it worked. So if you have nail polish like that in your stash, um, you know, see if that could work for you. And I'm sure you're, you're wondering why now, by now, like, after you watch like 10 minutes of video, why even put nail polish on cards, on paper? And, you know, why why not just use glitter paper or specialty paper? And I thought, you know, well, that paper's kind of expensive. And sometimes you just want a die cut of it or a small, a small shape die of it. And, you know, if you have really pretty nail polish in your stash, you could use this technique instead of buying, you know, a whole sheet of paper or a whole paper pad of paper that, you know, you only use a little bit of. And so that's why I decided to show you that technique today, besides the fact that I love nail polish. Anyway, so um, I put that uh, die cut into a card, and here's the holographic balloon. Um, I also did the word happy with the same nail polish. And then here's that iridescent flake um, nail polish, and I put some glossy accent over it, but, so it's kind of dull, but it really shines up prettier later. And then so I turned off all the lights, and I wanted to show you this in direct sunlight of how sparkly this nail polish is on paper. I mean, it is just stunning. Like this is a card you almost would rather keep than give it away because it's just so special. Anyway, that does it. Uh, that wraps it up for today, folks. Um, if you like this video, please, please, please hit subscribe because, you know, that way it lets me know that you want to see more of my crafty experiments and more of me destroying my craft supplies. Okay, thanks, bye. <laughs>